I gotta say, you're the only woman in history who likes the empty nest. It's weird. It's not that weird because they're here all the time. I put a quote in my book that uh, I believe it was Lucille Ball said, you see your kids a lot more once they move out of the house. And it's really true. You, you <laughs> do see your kids, once they move out of the house, they find all sorts of reasons to come back home. You know, and Mark and I had gotten into our habits of just sort of wandering around as we please, you know, leaving the doors open as we please. And then lo and behold, Lola comes back from London and now we've got to lock it up again. <laughs> you know, uh, Joaquin came home for his summer break and we had to lock it up again. You can't even be free as a bird in your own home. Exactly. Uh, for a while, my parents had moved in with me. I mean, come on. By the way, you must be sneaking around to get it in. I mean, you have no idea. <laughs> the lengths. The lengths that we go to. <laughs> Speaking of. Yes. Who did Lola chew out the most after Mark's Watch What Happens Live confession? Because I know someone got it. Okay, here's the thing. Why would I be blamed for anything Mark says on Watch What Happens Live? That's what I want to know. I wasn't there. I, I, I'm I'm just sitting at home watching like everybody. I was just watching what happens live at home. You know, so it's like, why am I getting yelled at? But yet I'm getting yelled at. Why? I need Lola to interview you guys on your podcast. Oh. That's what I need. Well, your wish is our command because we uh, have shot that episode. She doesn't interview us guys, but she interviews me. And it's, it's, can I say this, Jan? I'm just gonna say it. Lola and Michael interview me. Joaquin was supposed to join them because they agreed the only way they would do the podcast is if they could interview me, which I'm fine with because I know how to turn the tables with the best of them. But uh, so Joaquin, for whatever reason, did not want to be in the room so he was just texting them questions to ask me <laughs> i mean that's ludicrous i mean the things you go through with people you gave birth to exactly i mean i gave birth to me it's i mean mark not. was there in the room but theoretically he was not much help he didn't get anything he no no he didn't go through it we got to talk about something that came out of your podcast. This Matthew McConaughey, Woody Harrelson paternity test thing blew up. Did you follow up? Was there a DNA test done? Let me tell you something. If the DNA test is not administered by me, then I will not consider it proof of anything because I want to be the Maury Povich in that scenario. I need to figure it out because by the way, again, this is the benefit of hosting a podcast. That was a question, if you go back and listen to the episode, I did not ask. I did not say, hey, Matthew, are you and Woody Harrelson brothers? No, I didn't. Not It was not particularly probative. I was just speaking to him off the cuff and I said, I think of you and Woody as like, a great super couple. Like there's something yeah. about you two that I just really, really enjoy. And he said, well, you know, and then we all fell silent in this room. It was like, you could have heard a pin drop. It was the most, and it was one of those moments where we kept waiting and waiting because we shot it. And then I think we had to wait like three or four weeks for the episode to actually drop. And when I tell you, there's not a day that went by that we didn't wait for his PR people to call us and say, you're gonna have to cut that part out. I mean, we sat there, every time we got a text message, we would all pick up our phones to see, oh, oh, oh it's gonna be the, they're gonna tell us to. And no, nothing, nothing, nothing. And I am so, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm happy for them, I'm excited for them. And yet I'm also like, it's probably not, they probably are not brothers, but who knows, but what if they are? And how soon know. can I get in there with a swab? <laughs>
You'll come with me. You'll be my plus one. Oh, girl, I'm coming with the gloves and everything. <laughs> no, I will you... carry. I'm like your Steve. I'm the Steve to your mall, to your to your Jerry Springer. I'm you, gonna hype it up. <laughs> you are really the one person that I was like. Justin Sylvester probably could have gotten it. like what we need is Matthew's mom on the podcast and you come and you co-host with me that day because I'll just slide off to the side because yeah. you have a way of drawing the information out of people like if I want to know something about Joaquin I ask you because you know I'm a gay man we could do that you can pull you extract the information you disarm disarm mm -hmm. and just extract the information. It's amazing. Well, apparently you extract the information with Andy Cohen, honey, because I need to know how many dick pics you get in a month from this man. <laughs> well, there was a time, there was a, there was a time where I was getting a few, but it was the same to be clear. It was only one, you know, penis. Person. Yes, yeah. one person, one member, but repeated shots in different, you know, different areas, Angle. different, yeah, different angles at home, at work, at the beach. And it was, it was the final one where I was at work and it popped up big as can be uh, on my iPad. You know, some, a, a photo on your phone. Uh, you can uh, hide. You can you you can just turn your phone down, but when your computer's open and you're you're you know you're typing away and your executive producer just happens to be looming over your shoulder and boop, it pops up. Not only does it pop up, it says "pick from Andy Cohen," you know, right there from Andy Cohen pick, and it's just this, you know, thing. I mean, I'm not mad at it. I screenshot all of them and save them. So I can send them to you if you'd like to see. <laughs> I'm trying to get on the group chat. It's a good, it's a I'm, good one. I'm trying Is to get on the group chat. <laughs> it's a good one. But Gelman must be shaking in his boots because every time I listen to your podcast and I've listened to all of them, it seems like you get so more, much more comfortable in, in your zone that I feel like people are going to think that you are going to walk away from live and do only podcasting, could that happen? I'm sure people are praying for that. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you know, Ray, obviously live is like my heart and soul. It really is. It's like, you know, it, you know when you work with people that are your family, but not your dysfunctional family, like your family that you like, you yeah. know what I mean? And so that's live to me. This though, I just, I love, it's the dream. It's what's, I, I know that I'm wearing makeup right now because we're going uh, allegedly to be on camera, but typically when I'm here shooting the podcast, I am barely wearing clothes. I mean, I've come in here in robes, sweats, sweatsuits, t old dirty t-shirts, you know, the hair's in a bun, there's no makeup. And we're all just sat around this folding card table that we got from Amazon. And it's very loosey goosey and it's so, so enjoyable. Where's your husband at, by the way? I have no idea. I, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, that's the misnomer. We work together. So now people think that we're somehow like attached, but we really do, as you know, cause you do know us, uh, we have our separate like lives outside of work. You know, he goes to, the production office, he goes to the gym. I have my own life. Here I am getting ready. So it's like, I, I, we keep very active together, but we are also equally active separately with our separate stuff. That way, that's the reason why we can work together because we've got like other things going on.